welcome to Alan's Italy again. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have with us tonight uh, a very special guest, a guest we've had many times, so I'd like to welcome Frank Palaya once again. As Thank I you, Alan. Years ago. Yeah, great and to uh, tonight we are going to be talking about Roman aqueducts, the great invention of the uh, ancient Romans 2,000 years ago. Um, and before we do that, we have some unfinished business. So uh, this is tonight's show, and that's and, you know one of the photographs right there, which is magnificent. But the first thing we need to do is finish up some, some business from last week. I'm not gonna wear this hat again as I did last time, but um, we got a phone call last week that said that I should mention why this hat has such significance to me. And uh, I really never really discussed why it does. And I just wanted to tell you that every trip I take to Italy, I wear this hat. I mean, I wear this hat around town and everywhere else I go, but especially on the trips to Italy. So I just wanted to point out that the reason I wore the hat was because it is always used. There's a picture of the hat alone on my head. And here are a few examples. Here I am in, uh, I believe I'm in uh, Tuscany at this particular moment. And here I am uh, along a road in the Dolomites wearing the hat. And here I am at a castle. So as you can see, I'm always wearing the hat. And now we're ready to, now I can remove the hat because I don't really, it's a bit warm up here in Woodstock and we don't want to really have to deal with that hat on such a warm night. But let's start talking about aqueducts. Now to me, the whole concept of uh, ancient Rome um, creating the amazing things that they invented, um, you know, they created, created these wonderful baths and indoor plumbing. And uh, one of the things that they created was something called, and you know, there are certain words that I just have a lot of trouble with, so please pronounce that for me, the cloaca maxima. And that's the... Um, uh, the greatest sewer or the grand drain, mm -hmm. it was the sewerage system in ancient Rome. And I start out with a picture. Let me give you a better view of that, folks. This is uh, a picture of, the Ro of ancient Rome, focusing mostly on the Roman Forum. And you can see that there's a red line that runs right through it there. And that was the drainage system. And there is actually a remnant of that drainage system. There's actually a drain right in the Roman Forum, which shows you, you know, and they go down into that and take a look. And this is what it looks like down in that. And this was the sewerage system that removed waste from Rome uh, 2,000 years ago. Here's another, here's a view of the, uh, the drainage system as it exit, exits onto, I guess that's the Tiber, Tiber. right? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, pretty wonderful. But tonight, we are going to focus on aqueducts. So we're going to talk about this wonderful system that the Romans invented of bringing fresh water from the mountains to the one million citizens of Rome, eventually one million citizens of Rome, uh, 2,000 years ago. So uh, would you like to begin by telling us a little bit about aqueducts? Yes, well, um, I started... Uh becoming interested in aqueducts in the 1990s, <clears throat> going to Italy every other year or so, and um, discovering different parts of Rome, which the average tourist really doesn't go to. But I, I heard from an Italian friend uh, that, you, Frank, you have to go to Aqueduct Park. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, what is that? He says, it's a beautiful area just outside the city of Rome uh, in the... Uh, it's near Chinachita, which is uh, just about a 20, 25 minute subway ride outside of the center of the city. Uh, Chinachita is, is Italy's uh, Hollywood, Rome's Hollywood, where mm -hmm. Fellini and everybody made their films. Right. Across the highway from Chinachita is this big, big beautiful uh, green area, and it has several aqueducts running through it uh, because it's in a valley. This park is actually a valley, mm. and of course, wherever you have a valley, you have to have an aqueduct because uh, most, well, all the water from um, the sources are the natural springs that are found outside, many miles away from Rome. So uh, they're natural spring water. So 
the Romans um, were very good at a lot of things. One of them was delivering water to the city because the city had so many uh, sophisticated uh, water systems, the, the sewers, the uh, baths, the fountains, the, uh, the just everything uh, were relating to water. And um, so they needed a lot of water. So, and since they um, invented uh, concrete and uh, they didn't quite invent the ar arch, but they improved it uh, immensely. They knew what to do with it. Those two combinations were like a ticket to build, you know, and all, all these slaves, of course. Yes. And emperors with grand, uh, grandiose ideas and big egos and so forth. So uh, that's a perfect storm for building. So uh, they would take the uh, water out of the uh, springs miles away in an upper area, small foothills, like the Alban Hills, if you've ever heard of the Alban Hills. No, it's I haven't. a small little, uh, not a mountain range, but it's a high area of land, a little bit south of Rome. So they would uh, find a spring, a natural spring, start the aqueduct underground with their, their lead um, uh, piping. Because mm -hmm. most of the aqueducts are actually underground. But then as they approach a valley, they have to keep a certain angle for the water to naturally, the gravity to bring the water to where you want it. So the water was always brought in by gravity. Usually in an upper, higher area of land where the water source was. So it would have a natural gravity in right. incline, mm -hmm. decline rather, in, into the city. So you, you have this aqueduct coming in and all of a sudden you're, you're uh, challenged by having to cross this big valley. So you, you have no choice. You have to come up with a way to get that water in exactly the right decline. It's, I think, one centimeter per, per five meters or something like that. It's unbelievably small. And it has to be just the right decline. If it's too, too, uh, too much of a decline, the water will flow out of the aqueduct. And of course, if it's not going down enough, uh, the water will stagnate or just go backwards. So it's really important uh, to, to have that uh, right angle, correct angle. So how do you... Can I, can uh, I, can I show the, um, those first... Yeah, show, I have those first few... First diagrams, right, yeah. those first yeah, diagrams. Exactly you can use I'm, that to help you perhaps. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's... So see, here's the hill on the left, the spring in the hill. Then there's a, like a cistern which collects a large amount of water and that also, the water is a little bit stagnant there. What, what it does, it's a natural filter. The water sits there and all the debris and the particles and the dirt and the, and the germs or whatever fall down naturally mm. to the bottom. So only the water at the top is beautifully, beautifully cleaned in a natural way. So that water goes into that uh, funnel, the pipe in the ground there in the middle of the picture and then starts its travel uh, across the landscape, going at that perfect decline. And how they built that underground is, is really amazing too. Mm. So, ha so you come to this valley, you have to get that water from one end of the valley to the other. You're forced, you have no choice, you have to build some kind of a structure to move the water. So, you wanna keep the channel uh, of water in a beautiful straight, linear uh, direction and so the way to build it is you don't want to build a wall they could have built a wall you know to hold the uh, the channel yeah the specus is the actual term right. for the channel of water but that would be ugly a big solid wall look like the berlin wall you know or something right and it disrupts the landscape people can't c cross it it's just ugly right and it's also a lot of work so the brilliant solution was to build arches. Right. Uh -huh. And the arches serve three purposes. It's not just for looks. Of course, it looks beautiful. That's one. Number two, it doesn't disrupt the landscape. You still have the shepherds and the sheep and people mm -hmm. walking through the land as if it's not even there. Number three, the arches actually make it stronger because the way the arch is built, pressure uh, on the arch it strengthens 
uh, you can put more weight on, on an arch than on a solid wall. Right. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> those three um, reasons are wonderful <laughs> because uh, <clears throat> that's what they needed to get the water from the high points to the low points into the city. They're beautiful to look at. They don't disrupt the landscape, and they're actually stronger. So is there, were, there, was, there was really an aesthetic value there, right? That's, that's well, that's really... sort of a byproduct. You know, I don't think they purposely made the arch to look beautiful. It's just that's just the way it is. Well, so aren't you the using of it. aren't you using uh, a smaller amount of cement? Less cement. Less cement. To, less work to, to create it. Yeah. Less work. It's it, it's the best of all worlds. Yeah. It's it's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Not only that. This uh, diagram you have here, you can see that because the the first layer of arches is so strong, you can actually build another aqueduct on top of the uh, original aqueduct yeah. which you have there. And so you don't have to build an entire uh, another aqueduct. You can just piggyback right. on top. And sometimes there are three three aqueducts. There's places in Rome where... Right. We have some pictures of that, too. Yes. That's going to come out a little and bit later. And the famous uh, Pont du Gard in southern France has mm -hmm. three... Uh, that's three aqueducts in one. So then you... Okay. So you solve that problem of moving the water across a valley. It gets picked up again, and sometimes it goes back into the ground, like your diagram here. Mm -hmm. and, um, and usually when it goes into the city, it does stay underground. But sometimes... The arches can go right into the city, which Rome has several um, arched aqueducts right into the city, and I have a lot of photos of those. Yes. And then it gets channeled. You know, you build the different channels. And one, this part of the water goes to the fountain. This one goes to the sewer. This one goes to the, mm. to the indoor plumbing of this neighborhood. Now, once they got into the city, were what was it still on on an angle? Yeah, it still well, has was there to any, be. Yeah. So they had no pumping devices whatsoever. That's what's amazing about the whole, the whole, really it, it, the brilliance of <laughs> the Romans is, is it's mind boggling, it really is. And then when you see these aqueducts up close and personal, the scale is colossal. It's, it's just colossal. immense. Uh, you can't, and this is 2,000 years ago, you know, the, um, later on when you show the aqueducts. Um, yes. Uh, I can talk about the specifics of the building. Uh, of them, but but this this is a basic uh, explanation of the concept of m moving a lot of water from one place to another, and this is miles and miles and miles of, mm -hmm. of uh, distance. It's not just uh, a few hundred feet, because they had to go where the water was and where it was high up mm -hmm. in order to give it that much gravity to get it into the city. So, okay, so let's begin. Uh, you want to? You want to? Okay. Well, start with this one, or you want to uh, go that way? Whatever you want. It's, it doesn't matter. Well, you have this on. on okay. The this is Aqua Paola, uh, and it's uh, not. Um, it, it's not Roman, but it's it's uh, from the uh, Renaissance period, around fourteen fifty. Is that right? Yes, yeah, not Roman. Hmm. But this is Italy, um, right? Is this Italy? In Oh yeah, that's, this is a Rome. That's uh, in in the uh, Genicolo, which is in oh, the upper yeah. uh -huh. uh, one of the hills of Rome. We're right near where the so Italian aqueducts were still were still being built during the Middle Ages. Then yes, they don't have hmm. the beauty, they don't have the scale, and but the function was the same. This one uh, you can tell is not Roman because it's um, kind of a stucco exterior. Right. Uh -huh. The Roman aqueducts were the the bare stone and the concrete. Uh, in okay. fact, some of them were in, built with no concrete, and I hope you have the Segovia one well, because that's this the is, most Is this the idea. same one as we were just looking Paola. at yeah, this is, different view? This kind of snakes its way through uh, the upper part of uh, Rome. It's not right in the middle of the city. Is it still in use? No, this one is not. Right. Although no they view. are so well built that some of them still can function if they need them. But they don't really need them now with mm -hmm. modern it's technology. But um, so... Yeah, th this is, uh, and it's not very high either. It's it's kind of modest, but it, it does it does go for quite a long time. Is this still it? Yeah, that's uh, okay. This is right adjacent to the uh, Pamphili Park, which is a beautiful uh, park in a city park, kind of like a central park of um, more like the Prospect Park because it's not in right. the middle. It's, uh, Villa Borghese is, is sort of the um, the central park of Rome. 
Right, yes. Uh, this yes. is a little bit off to the edge of the city. So, um, Okay, now this is in Aqueduct Park, and this is one of the four aqueducts that are Explain there. what Aqueduct Park is. Well, I was saying, um, I thought I'd mentioned it, but in, it's a beautiful valley outside of Rome where uh, just by coincidence, these, these aqueducts had to pass through to get to the city from the upper Alban Hills. So, um, are they better preserved though in the Aqueduct Park than they'd be, like, let's say, in the center of Rome? No, they're like where they said, they're, okay, this is a place where we could kind of keep the aqueducts. No, they're about the same. Uh, you know, they're all in different, different stages of disrepair. This one is actually sunken into the ground a bit, not sunken, it's just that the land around it has been has raised risen, over right. 2,000 years. It's a natural. So this is not the way it looked two thousand no, years no, ago. No, because you can barely see the. Uh, yeah, the arches. In fact, I have photos of this aqueduct from twenty years ago and then from a few years ago, and I can even tell the difference. The arches are much smaller just in twenty years. That I of the span really? of the that I've and they have no intention of let's say digging it out to no, make it more. no no not, it's 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 they're just it, letting stuff yeah, naturally it's occur. Story, you know, Rome has so much uh, <laughs> so much antiquity that they. The last thing they want to do is dig out an aqueduct, right. believe me. But this is Aqua Marcia, and it's, uh, they all have a name. They're usually given the name of the uh, emperor who built the aqueduct. And uh, this one is uh, one of the m more sunken aqueducts. A lot, most yeah. of them are still pretty, mm -hmm. pretty tall. Uh, some of them are 100 feet high. I like this picture. Yeah, I put a little antique. Even though it was the I, same. Yeah, it's the same image. But, but I wanted little, to just show this because I thought it was so beautiful. The antique corners there, yeah. Okay. Okay, now this is uh, Aqua Claudia, uh, named after Emperor Claudius who built it. And uh, it's one of the more magnificent aqueducts because it goes, goes through this aqueduct park, and it's the biggest one that goes through the park. It's the longest and the tallest one. Now this section here is not quite the tallest, but there are other shots you might have later on. I might have where the um, yeah you get a sense there. The highest part that I found um, was a hundred feet high, which is a ten-story mm -hmm. building. And now, has the, the and now the ground here has probably gotten higher yeah, as well. So it was so even higher then. It was even higher, right? And uh, it's built with concrete and uh, cut stone. The stones are huge. They're the size of a Volkswagen. Hmm. Now you can imagine wow. the work involved to carry these enormous blocks, thousands of them, from wherever they quarry them, I don't know how far it is, with no machinery, no trucks, no trains, all by hand. Hmm. Then placed a hundred feet high and to the centimeter of incline for miles, <laughs> it's just, it's mind-boggling. It really is, if you think the about end, it. It's an, it's an incredible it's engineering mind -boggling. feat. mind-boggling. And you know, and that's why I kind of was interested in these aqueducts, because not that many people ever even talk about an aqueduct. Even no, they don't know really. what it is. They don't know what they look like. They don't know where they are. It's not part of very many. If you look at tour books, they don't really direct they never the mention them. tourists into this into and when these you areas. Consider that the aqueducts were actually physically the largest things that the Romans built. Period. Nothing is bigger than these aqueducts. The Colosseum is big, but it's a one kind of one object thing. Mm -hmm. These aqueducts are huge, 100 feet high, and they go for miles. I mean, it's beyond so, comprehension. So right? let's, let's focus on that for just a moment, because, you know, I read a lot of tour books, and I'm always planning trips yeah. to, to Italy. Yeah. And the tour books that I've read related to Rome never mention a single aqueduct. No. The, only, the only aqueduct that I've ever heard mentioned in the areas of, let's say, Tuscany and Umbria and Rome and so is the one in Spoleto for some reason? You familiar with that one? You know that one is uh, is it's not a major aqueduct, and I don't even know if I even have a photo. It's of it. possible Spoleto as a town is just promoting this to try to bring yeah. people right. to the town. Right now, the, these fragments here that that's part of Aqua Claudia. Mm. As you can see, there are sections that are completely broken apart. 
But then there are sections that are really pretty well intact, and they would actually still function if they had water flowing through them. So go right. to the next okay. one. Uh, yeah, now this, this is a, a nice shot because it shows you the, um, the specus or the channel uh, in the middle of the picture on that, uh, the edge of the uh, broken aqueduct. Mm -hmm. You can see that U-shaped wedge. Up yes, there, yes. You know, and uh, you don't have a, a, you have a cursor, can you? Put, Zoom put in your, on it? Well, put, can, can you put your cursor on it? Over here? Yeah. Just to show what it is. Yeah, okay, sure, yeah, that's right the here. specus or the channel where the this water... This is what we're referring to. And you know, to. it's not even very big. There you oh, that's, how do you oh, like that's that? great. Beautiful. Oh, we, we are on yeah. the cutting edge I mean, here. compared to the size of the aqueduct, it's not very large. Of course, it's about eight feet by eight, six, seven feet. Right. But when you think... Um, it's not the it's not the um, the amount of water going through the channel in any particular time. It's the volume, and it's nonstop. The water never stops flowing. Mm. That's what's another you know. So you don't have to have a big channel if right. the water is flowing twenty four seven. And these aqueducts and, literally and accommodated a million people. Well, there were at 11, one point. 11, 11 aqueducts, aqueducts at, accommodated at a million peak. people. More aqueducts that's, that's than any amazing. other city. And, and, that is still and pretty amazing. several of them are still there. That you can see them. Some okay. of them are underground. That, that's another kind of broken up section. Right. And then, of course, over the centuries, uh, even past the Roman Empire, the, uh, the Italians would still use them, and they, they fixed them here and there. They've reinforced the arches they covered them with brick this one you can see is covered with brick uh, the romans had bricks but uh, you can see the newer different color bricks that the uh, renaissance uh, italians put on to strengthen yeah, for example you see the reddish uh, stone inside the arch that's a reinforcement that Romans didn't originally have. That. Now, these did these disintegrate over time based on just you know the concept of of, of erosion and so uh, on, or were these destroyed by Rome's enemies well, during the various? Well, it's a combination of things. Barbaric. It's, of course, if they're two thousand years old to begin with. The elements, you know, rain and wind and water, and the World War One, World War Two, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of bombs probably got them. They even used some of the, uh, this aqua claudia was used for, um, as uh, barracks for, for World War II uh, soldiers. Because they were out in the field, hmm. they were really fortif you know, fortified, strong structures, so they would live under the arches. They would just camp hmm. out under the arches. Hmm. Um, some all. people, when the aqueducts go into the cities, yeah. people would actually live in the arches. They would uh, plaster the inside and mm -hmm. make nice smooth walls and then mm. they would build kind of a, a door wall and they would live in there. Wow, that's yeah. a, did not know that. Yeah, that, uh, most people don't. Okay, now that's me. <clears throat> now it shows you the scale. Yes, Those that's why I like this huge. picture. Yeah, the blocks are huge. And uh, <clears throat> this one is about 80 feet high, not, not the 100 foot high section. Right. And again, it was, but it could have been even higher because, you know, the ground may have... Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I threw this in simply yeah. because I like the picture. Yeah. I like that this is really a great picture with the airplane. There's a better one with the airplane. In the yeah, there is that, is that the one? There's actually another third one really? that's even better. Okay, than let's one. see if I have that. It's, you can see it. Nope, here. not sure. Well, it's that, uh, that section, but the plane is above it. But anyway, but this is a nice uh, section of the aqueduct. Now why, now, why is this arch... Why is there a uh, the second arch? That's a reinforcement arch. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. just that's just the this the purpose of this is, is to, to simply reinforce, reinforce the arch. Right. Okay. And also the top of the arch, I mean the top of the uh, aqueduct, the uh, over the channel, it were they were covered. They weren't exposed like they are now. They were covered, uh, obviously to keep keep debris out and then keep the water nice and clean as it's flowing across. Right. The you don't want bird droppings and people, no, you know, urinating right. in there, yes. you know, all that stuff. So, so they, they weren't were like covered. just simply troughs that, no, it that was were open. Like they were always tube on right. top. But mm -hmm. then, of course, the, you know, after a while, they disintegrate and fall apart. Right. But uh, is this? You're not ready for this one yet. Yeah, we can talk about okay. that because this is the uh, this That's is the, the one, one you were just referring to, Claudia, right? So I'm gonna we're gonna step away from the uh, table here for a moment, right? Yes. 
Alan, yeah. is this, uh, Alan, you can are we pan, okay here with this? You can pan and zoom in. Uh, now this is Aqua Claudia. Now you're looking at a span of about almost one kilometer mm. from left to right. And I photographed every single section of it. Wow. Now as you go, now the part here on the left is roughly about 100 feet high, about 80 feet high. There's another section that's higher. And um, as you can see, it's, it's majestic in the landscape, absolutely magnificent. In fact, when I came to the uh, Aqueduct Park uh, for the first time, I, I felt just like, um, you know, like I, had, I came into uh, the land of the dinosaurs. Right. I mean, they were sort of like skeletons, you know, bones of yeah. giant things. And there was one here, then there's one over there, and I'm this tiny little person amongst these big, magnificent things. This and is I, incredible. I just felt like I was uh, in the land of dinosaurs. So, um, so you, as you pan from left to right, you, you know, the, uh, obviously the perspective uh, gets smaller and smaller. But not only that, the aqueduct is actually disappearing into the landscape. In other words, if you were to follow this aqueduct all the way till you couldn't see it anymore, it would disappear into the ground. Uh, because, but it's not going into the ground, it's actually coming out of the ground. I see. Because it's coming out of the hill. Well, this is the valley. So right. it's in, in other words, what we're looking at now is the valley. Right. And as the aqueduct is going this way, it's actually going back underground. Into, into the upper hills. Into the mountains. Away right. from Rome. Uh -huh. Rome is the city is to the left. The Alban Hills is to the right. I see. So I actually photographed it all the way into it disappeared into the ground. Amazing. So it was kind of... You know, it was sort of like a dinosaur tail, you know, kind of just going yeah, into it's the an amazing picture. Yeah. Or a series and, of pictures. And what's lovely is that uh, the Romans, or whoever planted these trees, planted them kind of perpendicular uh, to the aqueduct. I noticed so you that. Have that nice, nice change of angle, you know, and you can see them through the arches, you can see them in front of the arches. They usually are parallel to the roads. There's a road there, that's why the trees are there. And the road goes right through the arch. So again, you have these monstrous sized things in the landscape, but they don't they don't bother it at all. It's, yeah. it's just an incredible uh, thing that, that they came up with. You now know, one of the just, things I'm noticing is that we don't see a, a, lot, a hell of a lot of people here. So, no, but, I mean... But actually there are a lot of people. They just are happen they? not to be in this picture. This park is huge. I mean, people come because here are, as... Because you know, I've been to Rome like probably 15 times. Right. And it never occurred to me to go to this. I mean, well, I never heard most of people, this. like I said before, most people don't know anything about the aqueduct. That's amazing. Don't know anything about this aqueduct park. I was told by an Italian to go here because uh -huh. Americans don't know about it. Because I was living on my Rome Prize one year right. residency, so yes. I had plenty of time. And the best time to go is in the spring, like April, May, because if this was springtime. You get the nice, beautiful green grass. You don't get any weeds, right. uh, and people are out. Now, there are people doing all kinds of things all over this park, but you just don't see them in this picture. Yeah, picnicking and so on? Picnicking, mm -hmm. bike riding, jogging, oh. just sit, you know, sketching, okay. artists sketching, photographers, you know. I see. It, what are the typical things that people do in a park. But not Americans, I'll bet. I'll well, bet there, there are, there are some, some, not some, some Americans. Not so many, not so many. Yeah. But, uh, but it was, a, you know, in fact, the first day that I went to this park, I've been to this park several times, but the very first time, was probably one of the best days of my entire life. You know how you really? have a few days in your life that stand out? They were just the best yes, days yes. for whatever reason. Yes, yes. This was one of them. And I got so many great photographs. And it was I spent the entire day there just by myself, wandering around, taking it all in. I was absolutely captivated, fascinated, charmed. You know, and it was just a glorious, glorious day. I well, I could tell know. that because I mean, you've we've shown a lot of photos of you of, yeah. of yours, you know. Yeah. But this is something that you know we, we have different angles and so on. Right. So obviously, this had a lot of meaning to you. Yeah, because it was let's, such a we, we, we have a lot. Of, we have a lot of stuff to show. So let's get yeah. back to this now. I mean, uh, you know, it was nothing new to, to, to history, but for me, it was brand new. So I, now, when do you want to? I was taking it all when in. When do you want to look at this? Um, or you want to show some more of this? Well, first? we could talk about this real because because this is the same image on the cover. Right. Yes. This is a prototype of a book that I've been um, trying to get published. 
for quite a few years now, um, the Roman aqueducts in the landscape. Because mm -hmm. specifically Roman aqueducts, because there's a lot of other kind of uh, aqueducts that are different periods of time. But mm -hmm. They don't they don't have the qualities of the Roman aqueducts. The, the the newer ones look nice too, and they do the same thing, have the same function. But you know they're they're not as decrepit, not as broken up, not as um, mm -hmm. textured, and not a, not as much interesting things going on around them. Right. But anyway, so this th these are the Roman aqueducts, and um, I don't want to go through the whole book, but yeah. But I just want to show you a few samples. Uh, this this is an interesting. This is a beautiful shot. Look at this. This is actually a Roman postcard from the 1800s. Right. Let's, can we show that? Yeah, Roman postcard. And you can see that's Aqueduct Park. That's the same park. And uh, you know, but you've got the little horse and buggy there, and uh, there's no structures around it, of course. But but there it is. That's Aqua Claudia from mm. the 1800s. You love this aqueduct. Well, it's just that this is the quintessential aqueduct, you know what I mean? There, there's several, but that's, okay. <clears throat> you know, and then there's this close-up version, which is a kind of a um, dramatic uh, fisheye lens view of, of the uh, same aqueduct. And then you've got these really long, you know, I mean, they go on, for, like I said, for oh. kilometers and kilometers, and I actually photographed every section. Wow. Uh, it, it is, and, and you know, another odd thing about the aqueducts is uh, in my journeys, I've been to several countries documenting and photographing these aqueducts. Um, <clears throat> they're so big, but yet they're hard to find. It's the most, the weirdest paradox. Mm. They're enormous, they're everywhere, but they're almost impossible to find. It, 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 it took me so much research hours and hours and hours of research. Oh, this is an interesting shot. The train goes right through the aqueduct oh, park. Yeah. Uh, so if you, when you take the train to Naples, actually, you pass aqueduct Is that park. right? Because yeah, I've right, done that. Yeah, I've you go that. right through it. And then there's a, uh, aqueducts from other countries. Of course, the Romans were in Spain. And you got to get France. this published, my friend. Yeah. It's got to be published. Oh, here's a shot of people living in the uh, arches. Oh, wow, I mean, let's see that one. That's this one here. Oh, okay. I mean, the people aren't in it, that? but you can see that they made like a little, a little house. A little house, yeah. An apartment, they plastered the walls. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And um, <clears throat> see what else we got here. Here's a nice, uh, uh, this is uh, Claudia again, but with a wide angle lens. Mm -hmm. So you see that ger dramatic arch. So this is a beauty. This is uh, in Segovia, Spain. I hope you have that on the yeah, let's get, let's get back to yeah. that because I think okay. the images might be easier for Ellen yeah. to, to show if they're on the computer. So let's get back to that, and I have, you know, have some of the other more amazing yeah. ones. Let's move on oh, yeah, through this one. That's the one with the airplane. Right? I'm not sure what the time situation is because um, my looking at the clock is not going to be well. That's that's not going to tell me anything. Yeah. Now keep yeah, keep keep going. Keep, just keep going. Okay, now this is a good one. I this. like this one. Yeah. Now this is Aquanero. This is a Nero's uh, Nero Nero. Built uh, by Italian. Nero. Uh, his aqueduct, just a little section of it, and this is right in the middle of town, as you can see. But you know, it, it's kind of like a—it's almost like a sculpture. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's it just fits one right arch. In. The buildings are attached to it, built all around it. There's streets right underneath it. There's trees growing around it. It's a very um, <clears throat> twenty minutes. Okay, good. Yeah, Thank you. Good, good. So, um, and as you can see, this one it has a different look than the Roman. I mean, this is Roman also, but it's later, late Roman, and it's made mostly of uh, brick. Right. I love, you know, this is, I was talking to my, um, my art history professor at Bard College. I've been taking courses there, as mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, w wouldn't it have been nice if they, if, if the ancient, you know, if, if during the Middle Ages, instead of, you know, breaking them down and using the bricks to, to, to build other things, that they left everything standing, she likes the fact that everything is kind of mixed in with everything. Mm -hmm. The modern is together with the medieval, which is together with the ancient Roman. That's well, like well, that's the charm the, of yes, Rome. Charm that's the charm of Rome. Rome. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Look at this. Uh, this is another aqueduct that's right in the middle of the city. It's kind of a uh, working class neighborhood with uh, street markets and vendors, that kind of thing. Kind that's of another view of it there. Yeah. 
Yeah, now here, this is the neighborhood. This is an uh, Aqua Alessandrina, hmm. built by Alessandro. So it's the Alessandrina because it's water, so it's a feminine A at the end. So here's a, here's a very good example where people were living under the arches. You see all those white areas? Those are all plastered walls. Oh, is that right? They, they huh. plastered the walls to make them nice and clean. Right. So these are and homeless it, people, basically, without really... Yeah, you know, you know gypsies, homeless people. Yeah. And then, of course, you got the cars parked right alongside them. Yeah. Now, this is a pretty big one, and it goes right through several neighborhoods. And it's... Um, Right. It's just a, it's a, and notice the cars are parked every which way. Yeah. They don't Welcome care to Italy. That. They don't care <laughs> about that. Yeah. Uh, th this is the one that was uh, you showed a couple of shots oh, back, okay, a different yes. angle, but without different the angle. trucks in front of it. Right, right. Yeah, this is also Alessandrina, but, it, but in a totally different part <clears throat> of the city. And this looks pretty hard. This looks like, you know... Uh, it's has... maybe 50, 60 feet high. Really? Yeah, mm. it's not, not, not as big as the others, but... Uh, this is a good That's view. The That's same the same one. This, this is a good view of it. Yeah, you get you, you can see the arch. Now there's a gate around it, right? So they don't want people to. Yeah, really... well, it's probably because it's uh, maybe a parking area. You know, it's private property. Yeah, yeah. It's not so much. Uh... Oh, this is Ac Aqueducto Paolo. This is the first first one. Uh, this is the nameplate on the aqueduct. This is the original nameplate. Yes, this is built in the 1500s. It's not. Wrong. Oh, this is built in the 1500s. Yeah, you can see, it's so, made okay. of brick. Kind right, of modern looking brick. Mm -hmm. and that's the same. That's thing. from before. Yeah, see, that, that's where it's coming out of the ground. You see how it's low there? In the yeah. Ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see the arch yeah. getting uh, higher, and higher and higher. That's mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, these aren't as beautiful as the Roman uh, aqueducts. Yeah. So they're kind of like a drab stucco on the exterior. Mm -hmm. But you know they they weren't they didn't make these to be beautiful objects really they made them as functional objects. Okay, now this one is a little artsy. Uh, this is one of my uh, photo photographic series uh, using uh, Polaroids uh, to um, photograph an aqueduct in four pieces, oh. uh, and then it's hand colored. Oh, and, and, yeah. Is that and the right? film was actually outdated, so it has that kind of old uh, archival sepia look to it. Right. And uh, this is Aqua, um, this is the Quintili. The name of this one is the Quintili Aqueduct. This is an aqueduct, close to Aqueduct Park, but not right in the park, mm. close to it. Right behind me, and then, now this is, this is an interesting thing. Now, you're looking at this photograph of a Roman aqueduct. It could have been taken 2,000 years ago, because if you look around, you don't see any sign of yeah. modern life whatsoever. In fact, right behind me was a super highway with billboards and stores and neon lights right, yeah. and Chita uh -huh. Chita right behind that. I mean, totally opposite of what you see here. But, you know, this is the 1990s. This looks like 2,000 years ago. Behind me was 1994. Now, it seems like most of the well, really well-preserved um, aqueducts are coming from the south, right? Because that's where the, the hills hill? were. The yeah, hills there were also the hills to the. Um, there are also well, hills there might there are, there were to the east and to the, the north, north too. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're just uh, yeah, they came from all sides actually. Oh, you used you included this one, right? Right. Actually, that's not an aqueduct. That's a that's a Colosseum in uh, in Croatia. I know it looks like this. A Colosseum. Yes, it's a big panoramic, uh, multi-image uh, panoramic of. Uh, Coliseum in you couldn't you couldn't we couldn't pull, tell we couldn't pull one pull a fast one on the I, audience I, I and tell them it was a color. I don't know either, but, but anyway, it looked like an aqueduct to me. Yeah, no, it's in it's, my naivety. Yeah, well, that's and that's not an aqueduct either. That's uh, that's the uh, alrighty <laughs> the walkway, and that's also the same coliseum. Oh, jeez. This is in Croatia, by the way. It's the third biggest um, coliseum, Roman coliseum in the world. Well. It's well preserved. Yes, still use it's it. really very they beautiful. They still use it for concerts and shows and things. You know, these are these are the same aqueduct images, but transformed into my um, kind of photo sculptural uh, pieces. Right, which we'll get to at a at a later and, time. Uh, but uh, yeah, okay. Well, I use this as a as an illustration of the uh, Segovia Aqueduct, which is one of the more magnificent ones still intact. In fact, it's in mint condition. In fact, this one actually still could function if, if you let it. 
but they don't need it, so it's not not uh, functioning. But it could. And this one is absolutely astounding. You you come into Segovia, which is a kind of a medium-sized city. It's not a huge city. One hour outside of Madrid. And this aqueduct is the most dominant thing in the whole city. It actually cuts the city right in half. Beautiful. It's about 300 feet high at the middle section there. 300 feet, which is almost as high as the Statue of Liberty, just mm -hmm. to give you a scale. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's, a double, it's a double aqueduct. This is magnificent. And w to top it all off, the fact that it's huge, it's in perfect condition, this one is built with no concrete. Gravity is holding this aqueduct together, and that's it. And th that's, the, that's the kicker. That's the killer. Uh, okay, I'd stop right here. <laughs> it's not built of concrete? What is it built of? Stone. Just stones uh -huh. that are carved to fit together perfectly huh. at that perfect angle, bringing the water from the right-hand side, that's the high part, down to the lower left. Um, now, okay, so we're talking about Roman aqueducts supplying fresh water to the Roman population, mm -hmm. but this is Spain, so this is this is going to some colony of of, oh, of right, the Romans, you know, the Roman right? Empire I would assume was, was vast. I know right, it was from, vast. From Portugal, but it's not. So they didn't just take care of the citizens of Rome; they took care of the citizens well, no, it was all, all over their, the empire. It was all there. And these are these are not people. These are. I mean, some of them were probably Roman soldiers who were. These, you know, the water was well, supplying, but I think Claudius built this one also. So, so they, he, um, was, he was a great builder. So the uh, the Romans, when they conquered, you know, some new land, really took care of the populace very, very well. Yeah, because it was their land. It, it was their land. It was yeah. not Spain. It, it was it was Rome. Huh. <laughs> yeah. The people that were there were Romans automatically. You know that. Uh, so okay, let's see what's Spain next. Spain came thousands of years later. I don't know why you put that in. I don't know what that is. Don't don't ask me. Yeah, that, that's that's also the same. Back to Coliseum. the Coliseum. That's the Coliseum. All right. Not, uh, okay. The, uh, all right. So the top one there. That's another view of the uh, Claudia, the one that's behind us, uh, shot with a with a wide angle lens. Mm -hmm. The bottom part there is a section of Rome. It's not really an aqueduct. It's the uh, Palatine Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome. Uh -huh. And um, okay, now this is an interesting one. This is in Spain also. It's in Merida, Spain, a very small city, the western side of Spain, very close to Portugal. And um, it's a little different from the usual Roman uh, aqueducts. It's pretty tall, and uh, it's made with um, a diff different colored stone. It's not the typical kind of gray, brownish stone. It had a kind of a reddish color. And it had uh, two layers of reinforced arches. You can see there, there's a lower level of arches, and there's a middle, and then there's the upper. Arches. Three levels of arches. Yeah. And they all carried water. You, no, th there's one, here's two, and then right. there's the top. Uh -huh. uh, it, because it's very tall, it needed extra arch support. So they built extra right. arches. Uh -huh. So these columns didn't collapse on each other. These arches kept these columns nice and straight. I see. You know. This is amazing. And, this one's uh, amazing. Yeah. This one was very, very different from the rest and that's uh, called the, um, the, the Milagros uh, in Spanish because it's in Spanish. Milagros aqueduct which is uh, means miracle. Now were the arch now were the aqueducts built like were there several channels you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, Instead of one channel, there were several yeah, channels coming through. Yeah, they were like piggybacked through. on top. Right, exactly. Not this one. This is one channel. Right. And uh -huh. three, three levels of arches, but one channel. Right. Let's see what else we have. That's not an aqueduct. I don't know what the heck that is. It's the famous hat. All right, we're back okay. to the beginning. Those are okay. the ones I have. Well, I want to show one thing okay, about come back that to I this. forgot to mention about the uh, building of the aqueduct. Yes. Now, you don't just pile a bunch of stones up at that scale. They had to build wooden scaffolding. Here, you can see yes, wooden yes. scaffolding uh -huh. um, to as a frame for them to place the stones. Mm -hmm. And then once the stones were placed, then they took the wood away and it would stand by itself. But in order to build, um, here, here's another picture. 
be a wooden structure. Underneath each arch, they had to build this structure to support it while they were building. Mm -hmm. and, I see. Uh, like any building needs, yeah, you know, yeah. a scaffolding to yeah. to help support support it. Now here's here's a picture of a, uh, of a gate. Um, the aqueducts, when they would approach a main intersection, they they were called gates because they were like a gateway between uh, for the traffic. And here you have three aqueducts on one. See the th oh yes, see the uh huh, yes, yes, yes. Channels. There's yes. three. Uh huh. Aqua. Wow. And then like uh, Aqua Claudia, Aqua Marcia, and Aqua Alessandrina, mm -hmm. for example, could be going through this section. I see. Now here's a, here's another close up of the channels. You see, here's two aqueducts piled up. Okay, can we show this on the camera? Right here. You see that. Uh, the channels are still uh, visible. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Oh, and I also have some um, aqueducts from Turkey, which you didn't. Uh, is that a multi leveled aqueduct? Yeah, this is the Pont de Garde in France. Mm -hmm. These two are in Turkey. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. It's hard to remember the Turkish. You're doing very well tonight, remembering these names. If you miss the Turkish one, I think the audience will forgive you. I have it written down at home. But anyway, uh, this is in Istanbul. And this one is a little further out into the hinterlands of Turkey. So you travel all over, you traveled all over Europe. Now, what, was your intention to visit the country, or you just, you went there specifically to photograph the aqueducts? Uh, uh, well, I was sort of piggybacking with my wife, who was... Uh, traveling to, uh, for research on a book, it's a Roman, mm -hmm. Roman art book right. that she was writing. Mm -hmm. So along the way, um, I mean, I was photographing for her book, and so along the way, I made it a point that we went to see the, the aqueducts, because right. that was my particular project. Right, right. So we were doing two things at one, you know, in one, one trip. Here are two more uh, Turkish aqueducts. This is Aspendos, and this is the... Uh, this is the, um, the probably the most recent aqueduct built in 500 um, AD. Now, now, were these built during when? Late, like 500 AD. Yeah, because then the empire during had Const moved to the yeah, east. During yes, Const during Constantine. Constantine, yeah, right. So, uh, as you can see, that was looks, my next question. Yeah, is, in fact, you can see it looks a little more. Modern. So, the Turkish ones were built during the latter part of the empire. Uh, not all of them. This, after Constantine. Not all of them. This is an old one here. Was Turkey still part of the Roman Empire then, prior to Constantine, and the moving of the of the capital from Rome to yeah, Constantinople? Yeah, I'm so sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Croatia, Turkey, and right. all that whole, mm -hmm. you know. All the way to England, North Africa, Israel, right, even into even into India. How are we doing time-wise, Alan? Let's see what else we have here. Oh, here's um, oh here's a different here's a different aqueduct. This is Aqua Felice. This is a Renaissance aqueduct uh, named after Pope Felice. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very interesting yeah, one. Yeah, this one is this is Aqueduct Park also. And you can see it's kind of kind of ugly, you know. I mean, it just doesn't have the beautiful thickness yeah. of the Roman. It's just as big. It's not majestic. No, and it's not very tall, you know. And these arches are very small, and it's yeah. just, you know, you can see the scale. Yeah, we're um, starting to lose it a little here. I see. And this it's... one is newer, so the covering, that the top of it is still there. You can see that. See yeah. The top? It's still right. Covered. Uh huh. Because it's newer. It's yeah, fi it's fifteen hundred years. I like the other. More, the other ones were majestic. These yeah. are like more uh, more mundane. Mundane. We have a few. I have only a few minutes. Oh, here's to go, one in so Portugal. Any... It's not Roman, but it's in Portugal. It's got a different kind of arch. These are beautiful. And this is quite this is more big. of a pointy this, arch. Yeah, this goes right through Lisbon. And pretty big, pretty tall. Uh huh. But it's uh, yeah, it's got a pointed arch. It doesn't have a rounded arch. And this is later as well? Oh, yeah, this is maybe 1,000 or, no, maybe just a uh, rena renaissance period. Right, okay. Now, here's some bridges that are American, but they have a very Roman look to them. Uh -huh. This is a very famous bridge in Pennsylvania. And it's 
And it's uh, the lar world's largest concrete bridge. With the same concept. And it's got a series of lots of arches for extra strength because it was a mm -hmm. train bridge, so it's a lot of weight. Right. And um, okay. So. so All right. So uh, the influence of, uh, I think we should call it. I think we should call it a day. This was wonderful. It's a day. I thank you. Not only thank were you. the pictures magnificent, but I, I think I learned some things. I hope so. Yeah, and I hope the audience did as well, and I hope that the audience enjoyed it very much. And um, I'd like to say uh, thank you very much for watching tonight. Thanks to Frank, and uh, we hope to see you uh, next week. So, uh, buona notte e buona, buona fortuna.